I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be talking about can you drink the water here in Nicaragua? Can you use it for brushing your teeth, cleaning your vegetables, and all those things? Because people have this question. And obviously, if you're going to be traveling here or considering living here, these are things you may want to consider. How does this affect you in daily life, and what do you need to do about it? So, we're going to get to water in Nicaragua right after the bump. One of my regular viewers and regular commenters, Maximinius75, sent in this comment and question yesterday. Thanks, Scott, for the great video as usual. Like I said, say those things, you're more likely to get read on air. Uh, lots of valuable info. I'm planning to work remotely from Nicaragua, not as a trader, though. This was in response to the two videos about Brad's life, where he's considering moving into the country and working as a stock trader. Okay, I would have some questions about a different topic. Sorry, this is OT and maybe was discussed in the past already. We did a little bit, but it was like mixed into other things. We've never done a show on it. The topic is water. I know you must absolutely avoid drinking water from the tap or from from the streets. Definitely don't drink water running down the street. I don't know who's doing that. But the dogs do that. I don't recommend they do it either. But the topic raises some more detailed questions. Can we use the tap water for anything at all? Is brushing our teeth, boil food and vegetables? Can we shower using the water there? Can we trust the water that is served in restaurants? And what about, say, the drinks served in pubs and the related ice? Are they safe? Thank you very much in advance for being able to answer. So, I don't know where the we must absolutely avoid drinking the tap water comes from. The tap water in Nicaragua, like all the surrounding countries, is completely safe to drink. I am unaware, I'm sure that they exist, of any municipality in all of Nicaragua where it is a known issue to drink the tap water. Now, let's be clear. Even So, so if you're coming from like the United States or Canada, you're used to the world's best water supply. I don't know for a fact that it's actually the best in the world, but if it's, it's definitely the best for a large country. Like it's absolutely fantastic. And so you're very spoiled. We're all very spoiled. I grew up in New York and the amount of safe water that you could drink was far in excess than anybody could ever actually drink, right? Like you said, unlimited great quality water. That is one of the strongest things that the US and Canada have. Just an amazing fresh water supply that is very clean and safe. Now, that said, even the U.S. as the most extreme good water supply country on its scale, at least in the world, still has isolated problems here and there, Flint, Michigan being very famous and little bits of Mississippi. But those places are extremely limited. And I say that even though I actually went to university in Flint, Michigan, and so had to deal with that water supply when I was younger. But in general, it is so safe in the United States that we get this idea that the rest of the world isn't safe. And that's not actually the comparison. Part of the problem is that the United States is bordered to the south by Mexico, famously and possibly the worst water supply in the world. This creates quite the disparity with the United States being a global example of how well water can work out. I didn't mean to use well in that context. That makes it sound like well water. Well water also works in the United States. Everything works in the United States when it comes to water. In Mexico, they have a problem with parasites in the water. I don't know why this is limited to Mexico. I've asked this before and people have theories. There's probably some water expert who can jump on and tell us why Mexico specifically has an issue. But even Mexicans, right, who live, grew up, always there, always drank the water, far away. Like you can imagine someplace like Mexico City may have a problem because of its size or because it has a water supply issue. But in general, like anywhere in the country, Mexicans who have grown up there still have to take medicine or are advised to take medicine for parasites and such because there are so many parasites in the water supply, just no matter where your water supply is coming from. So if you're, if you're looking at Mexico, Americans are often presented with the foreign world has water supply issues. But that issue is limited to Mexico. The moment you hit the Guatemalan border, you're free to drink the water again. Same in Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, all of them drinkable water supplies. But in South America, drinkable water supplies as well. So this is an isolated problem with Mexico, but I think combining Mexico is such a significant problem. And yes, if you're going to be in Mexico, certainly be aware of there being the risk from the water. And when I'm in Mexico, like I am a very willing to drink the water anywhere in the world kind of guy. And when I'm in Mexico, I brush my teeth with bottled water, right? To be clear, I'm very careful. I'm careful when I'm showering not to, you know, inhale a whole bunch of like actual water. You missed whatever, but to actually get water, like I'm careful about that stuff. So I'm I'm serious when I say in Mexico, I treat it one way. And the moment I'm in Guatemala and South, I don't worry about it basically at all. Now, you always want to take some clues from the locals. 
So if you talk to the locals and you say, do you drink the water? And they're like, no. Yeah, you must be in a spot that for some reason has a water problem. I have never encountered that in Nicaragua. Now, the most likely place I'm hypothesizing here, please do not take this as there's a problem, is that in Ometepe, because it's an island, definitely has struggles with water supply, simply because where are they going to get their water from? It's a lot more difficult. Now, because of the lake and the, and the volcanoes, maybe they have a lot of water and it's not an issue at all, but they don't have any lakes on the island, so I don't know what they do. But they're in the middle of the lake, so they probably just pull from the lake. It's probably not a problem. So... Uh, but throughout the country, we have water supplies all over. We have municipal water supplies, like here in Leon, you can use that safely. You, out on the beach, even, people use it. Uh, in, in Granada, people use it. In Managua, like, I don't even know when I've had bottled water in Managua. Like, you just drink tap water there because it's, it's really good tasting. Now, a reason that a lot of Americans drink bottled water, even though their water supply is perfectly good, right, is because they like, one, the convenience of a bottle, two, the prestige of drinking from a bottle, Three, often bottled water tastes better. When you're doing bottled water, you're very careful about making sure that water tastes good. And so a lot of Americans just like the taste of specific water. That's why people select, say, Fiji water over something else or smart water because they have that extra mineral taste. Some of them are uh, carbonated because some people like that. Not in America too much, but in Europe, that's really popular. Same thing happens here in Nicaragua. A lot of us uh, are also on wells. You have wells and, and municipal supplies, just like anywhere else. I grew up on a well in the United States, right? And we didn't like to drink the well water that much. We always did. I grew up in an age when bottled water wasn't a thing, but we didn't like drinking the well water because it tasted kind of salty and sulfury. Those things aren't bad for you. I mean, in too much quantity they are, but not just the flavor in the water. It's perfectly safe to drink. Maybe it was even healthier than normal water due to the mineral contents, but it didn't taste all that awesome. So we often and drink other things or one to add flavor to it to cut that a little bit here in Nicaragua it's the same if you have a well or you're on a municipal municipal supply that doesn't taste the best it's safe to drink 99% of the time but it may have a flavor that's not the best and in the same way we don't put our ice cube trays into the freezer if we can help it because it draws all that flavor from the freezer and it doesn't taste the best we use an external on the countertop ice maker because we do go through a lot of ice. This is Nicaragua. It's warm. You like ice in your drinks. Even Nicaraguans often like ice in their drinks, although not as much as you might think. Uh, but we do that, and we use bottled water for that because we don't want any uh, discoloration. We don't want any flavor from the, the tap, and we don't want to have flavor from the freezer. So we're just being a little bit premium with our ice. And if that's something you want to do for flavor reasons, absolutely. We drink bottled water here normally. I know I showed myself drinking tap water, and I will drink it anytime that I need to. I don't think anything of it. It's, you know, if I'm thirsty, I'll just drink from it. If I'm lazy, I'll just drink from it. But does it taste as good as our bottled water? No. However, it tastes awfully good. I barely can tell the difference. If you just put it on my desk, I probably wouldn't notice. The big reason that I drink bottled water is because it goes through a chiller. I've got a standing unit that just automatically chills the water or boils it. Whatever, if you want to make ramen, you just go to that. We don't use a microwave. And I want to drink cold water most of the time. I'm American. I like cold drinks. So that's a cultural thing. So I have this, uh, this unit that just automatically chills my drink to really, really cold as I pour it. And so I use bottled water for that. We also use bottled water in the coffee maker, but not because it doesn't taste good or because there's anything wrong with that. Of course, coffee makers essentially boil the water. They don't actually boil the water. I, that's not quite the same, but they get really, really hot. They do kill a lot of things. So even if you had water supply problems, generally you can use it in the coffee maker, but we don't do that either because you're more likely to calcify the coffee maker with that water supply. We do notice that like our showers and stuff do get a lot of calcium. They get a lot of mineral buildup when you're using the water from uh, the, the well in this case. So we avoid that in machines, not because it's not safe, just because it's going to clog things, we're gonna to have to clean it more often or it's not gonna last as long or whatever. And there's also here, getting towards the beach, you're more likely to get salt in the water supply. And again, things will rust or whatever. So those are all kinds of things to look out for. But so this question, this idea that you have to avoid the water here in Nicaragua, even as a tourist who's only here for a little bit, isn't real. I know of no place you need to do that. Definitely not in Granada. Definitely not in San Juan del Sur. Definitely not in Managua. Definitely not in Leon. Definitely not in Matagalpa, Esteli, Hinotega. All of them totally safe to drink the water. Now, as always, as a travel advisor, we recommend that as a tourist, if you're only in a place for a short period of time, you kind of want to minimize your water exposure just because it's one more spot that you might feel a little bit of tummy upsetness as a traveler. Traveler's stomach is a real thing, and every region of the world has slightly different microbes. There are always microbes in your water. The United States has microbes in your water. If you're a Central American or a South American or an Asian or whatever, and you travel to the United States, 
We recommend you don't drink tap water in the United States either, even though it's some of the best in the world, maybe the best in the world. Even though we as Americans, at least when I was a kid, drank it nonstop. When I'm in the US, I don't go for bottled water. I just drink the tap water all the time because it's basically tasteless in every jurisdiction that I get water in. It's fantastic, right? I actually love just being able to go push, push, all the time, right? With with no flavor. So that's that's a, a thing that I miss. Like here, we can drink it. It just yeah, it doesn't taste quite as good. Um, so I like that the chilled water. Also, the groundwater in the United States is generally colder. So when you're getting it out of the tap, it's the temperature I want to drink it. Here, coming out of the tap, it's a good five to ten degrees warmer, which is fine. But you notice that it isn't as cool. And as an American, that's not what I want to drink. So that's why I do that. But um, as a traveler going to any new region, not necessarily a bordering country, not like an American going to Canada, but if you're going to another region region of the world significantly, especially if you're going from the, the temperate zone into the tropics or vice versa, you're going to have fundamentally different microbes in the things that you're exposed to. And you want to minimize that to some degree, simply because your stomach is going to have to deal with those microbes. And the fewer that they get, the easier it is for your body to adjust. It's not a big deal. It's not going to harm you. It just gives you an upset tummy in most cases. And many people are not affected by it at all, but a few people are. And so when you're traveling extensively, we generally recommend that you take a little bit of time to drink bottled water and just be a little bit cautious because it minimizes how much your body has to struggle to adapt to the new microbial uh, e ecology of the area. But that is only minimizing exposure. If you're going to be brushing your teeth, use the tap. If you're going to be cooking, use the water. If you're going to shower, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about getting it in your nose. Don't worry about getting it in your eyes. Don't worry about getting it in your mouth. None of that. Don't worry about it. Should you fill up a glass at the sink when you have access to bottled water instead? Probably not. I would recommend using the bottled water. This is only for temporary tourists. Once you're here for several weeks, I would recommend not even bothering to do that. Of course, if you like the flavor of bottled water better, do that. If you like the features of bottled water, whatever, do that. If it's going to worry you, do that. Don't let it bother you. But cause, especially because bottled water here is very, very cheap and generally you're supporting local businesses. And that's one of the reasons that we used to do it when I lived in Granada, even though we knew there was no point to using the bottled water. Like what difference did it make? We drank from the top. We, we did everything from the tap. But there were these kids that did the delivery of the bottled water and that's how they earned their living. So we did it to give them a job. We didn't do it because it was the water. Really not a big deal. But really, if you're gonna be living here, you're gonna be drinking the water all the time. Everybody uses the water. The locals use the water, the, the extra in Harrow's, the expats, the, the immigrants, we all use the water. Even if we don't realize it, we don't often think about it, but no one's brushing their teeth with bottled water. No one's cooking with bottled water. That stuff is really silly. Yes, loads of us have bottled water machines in our houses and we drink that when we're drinking large quantities of water almost entirely for the flavor or just the convenience uh, of having it chilled or whatever. So that is my recommendation that wherever this idea that you have to worry about the water, it is good. Whenever you're traveling to a new place, ask these questions, be aware of what people are actually doing. But here in Nicaragua, water is not something you have to worry about, especially as a temporary thing. Now, all of that said, there is a caveat. There are a few places that are very, very old, Leon and Granada especially, and there is a small amount of worry that there are old pipes in the ground, possibly in the house that you're in and not in the ground itself, but actually in your building that are so old that they may have heavy metal exposure. This is not a problem when you're a tourist. So this is the opposite, right? We just said when you're a tourist, maybe consider bottled water just because you've got those microbe changes, not micro problems, and, and there's no reason to do an extra amount of exposure. When you're gonna be living here long term and you're gonna be drinking the water in massive quantities, then the absolutely tiny potential for a tiny amount of heavy metal exposure could add up over time. And under that circumstance, you wanna be a little bit cautious. However, Modern cities like Managua or Ciudad Sandino, you don't have to worry about these things. They have modern pipes. Granada and Leon stand out as really ancient cities with some really old infrastructure. However, if you drive around Leon, they are tearing up the streets at a massive rate and putting in brand new water infrastructure. Not because of this problem, and we don't even know if this is a problem, it is a hypothesis. If you're going to live in a place that's going to use municipal water and you have a really old house, yeah, maybe consider having it tested before you drink huge amounts of it. 
but go ahead and drink it while you're waiting for testing. Don't worry about that. Heavy metal exposure is something that builds up over time, over a lifetime. If you're retired, probably doesn't matter. If you are drinking bottled water most of the time and only drinking taps sometimes, doesn't matter. If you're gonna be drinking from lots of different locations, doesn't matter. It's if you're gonna be living in one place and drinking tap water nonstop and you're coming in fairly young, maybe in your 20s or 30s, and you're looking at a lifetime of potential heavy metal buildup, yeah, then maybe have it tested just to be sure there's not heavy metals. Like that's, seriously, you would need to do the same thing in the United States too, it's just that the chances are a little bit lower. But here in Leon, because there's not enough uh, uh, modern piping to handle the pressure of a modern municipal water system, they have to replace the water pipes. The thing that's happening, and people have talked about this on the channel a little bit, is we do water rationing, but we're not doing it because we're in a drought right now. We would do it if we were in a drought, but we're not. We're definitely dry, but we're not in a drought, and the rains are starting to come. We have enough water. No one that I know of is having water problems here in country, but uh, different areas do do water rationing. It is pressure rationing, which is not the same as a water supply ration. They're not limiting how much water comes into the city or comes from the reservoirs. What they're limiting is the amount that they're able to push out because if they uh, energize the entire system all at once, it will blow pipes all over the city because the end points can handle the amount of pressure that they'll get, but the main lines that feed them can only handle so many of those end points. So what they're doing is they're tearing up the entire city and putting in new piping so that they're able to energize the whole city. The thing that hits Leon a lot is one, it has a, a large population or the second largest city in the country so they have a lot of homes that they need to feed from the water supply and they also use the municipal supply for irrigation in many of the areas around Leon. And that's where it really causes a problem that they need to be able to keep the fields watered at certain times a day. And to be able to provide the pressure for that, they have to cycle through cutting off different parts of the city on a regular basis so that they're able to keep the pressure up. And so everybody, for the most part, either gets used to the schedule and doesn't worry about it, or they use tanks or something similar so they're able to store water and ride out the outages. The outages are normally just a few hours. They're not a big deal if you're used to it. If you're not used to it, you have no planning, you have no water whatsoever. And this is another reason why bottled water is popular. It's because even in Managua, this kind of rationing can happen. And so people want to have bottled water so that they're able to drink. Now, if you're very poor, people don't use bottled water at all. We're talking about people who are lower middle class and up are likely to start paying for bottled water, and they may only keep it to use when there's no water supply in some cases. So it, it, can, it can serve multiple functions. But if you're used to it, you have a tank, uh, you're able to ride out very short water outages with no problem at all. People will often put in a several thousand gallon tank, and you're only worried about normally you know, uh, flushing toilets and, uh, you know, being able to cook and do normal things, clean something if you really need to. You're not likely going to be taking showers during that time. Of course, some people do. Some people put in big tanks and don't worry about taking showers when there's no water supply because it, they know it's coming right back on. It's just a matter of cycling through the city. But some of those things cause people to, one, worry about the water and two, uh, want to have bottled water. But those types of projects where they're upgrading that also eliminate risks of any lingering heavy metal uh, exposure that may be in there from really old infrastructure structure that may be more than 100 years old. So even in those cases, the, the chances that you have anything to worry about with the water is extremely low. So I, I just you don't have to worry about it. But for absolutely certain, brushing your teeth, showering, cooking, all those things. When you're in a restaurant, don't worry. The, everyone is eating the same stuff. So because everyone else is doing it, if there was a problem, it would have been caught long before you were there. The only time you'd have to worry is if you went to a restaurant that opened in the last, say, week or two, and you're one of the very first people, and there hasn't been enough time for people to report that they're getting sick from it yet. Like, we have very good health standards for restaurants here. Same as in the U.S. Uh, it, like, it's really similar, right? Now, they treat some things differently, and in some ways, Nicaragua does some of them better in some ways. The U.S. does some of them better. They're not identical, but they both have really good uh, health standards for restaurants, uh, at least real restaurants. Food on the street, yeah, it's a little bit different. But also, drinks on the street, everybody drinks those. The refrescos that the people sell out of their houses, yeah, it's probably made with tap water. Nobody cares because in most cases, it's mostly fruit. There's very little tap water. And again, that tap water, you would drink it just fine. So no reason to avoid those either. I don't know of any situation where you have to avoid the water. Um, water running down the street, of course, is super dirty, but it's on the ground. <laughs> don't drink groundwater, flowing groundwater. That's just terrible. Uh, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Just don't worry about the water here. But yes, we do drink bottled water all the time out of mostly convenience, um, but uh, definitely spread the word.
that uh, one of the things we're very proud of here in Nicaragua is a good water supply in general. We do have pollution in the lakes. We don't pull from those lakes, and they're slowly getting cleaned up. They're working on those things. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you have questions like this, or even better, if you want to send in a video question of this. The instructions for sending in a video that I can put you into the show are down below, but just scroll down and ask your questions or say hi, leave your comments, whatever. We check those. I really do read everything that YouTube allows through and try to, to comment as much as possible uh, and definitely use that as a source for uh, pulling uh, content for the show. And uh, as always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I will have a coffee that is most likely made with the tap water. Actually, it's not true. Coffee shops do use bottled water for the taste because if you're competing on making the best coffee, you certainly want to start with the most neutral water possible. And our national water bottled water company is using reverse osmosis from Coca-Cola. And so, or I'm sorry, from Cerveceria Nacional. It's the same water supply used for the beer. So they have to make sure it's absolutely fantastic because they need that beer to taste good. So that's where we're getting our water supply from. Most of the time, Coke does provide quite a bit of the water, but they're they're definitely a secondary supplier, smaller bottles in the, in the expresses, like the Super Express, the corner stores, the big water bottles are normally coming from the beer company. And of course, it'd be awesome if you posted this video on social media, let someone know about it, put it on a travel vlog or, or discussion group somewhere and let people know, yeah, the water is safe here. I will happily drink it on camera whenever you need. And uh, if you would tell a friend or family member about the show, I'd appreciate it. I will see all of you tomorrow. And if I do my job, four videos are going to pop up on the screen. If you could click on one, let it play. I'd love it. Thanks, everybody.